Do your kids listen to other people's advice way better than they listen to your advice? Mine too. This week's episode is all about a kid podcast that shines a light on kids who are doing awesome things and helps your kids learn how they can do those awesome things too. It's called the Little Leaders Podcast, and my kids really enjoy it because they love hearing other kids' voices on their podcasts. Hi, I'm Andy Smiley, the Friendly Podcast Guide. I'm a mom who uses podcasts to fight the boredom and loneliness of motherhood and to entertain my kids when I need a break. And I want you to be able to use podcasts in these ways too. But it can be overwhelming to try and find a podcast you or your kids will enjoy in the thousands of shows that are out there. That's where I come in. Each week, I talk about different podcasts with topics ranging from parenting to pop culture and everything in between. My episodes are short and they answer your questions about the show so you'll know if it's a good fit for you or your kids or not. Now, let's talk podcasts. Tina Shepardson, the host, describes the show like this. Little Leaders is a podcast for kids that celebrate the traits, experiences, and actions that make leaders effective. We hear from real school-age leaders nationwide that are making an impact on our world today. And we close our time with a picture book recommendation supporting, inspiring, and inviting children to lead in our ever-changing world. Each episode is around 15 minutes long. Before we learn more about the vibe of the Little Leaders podcast, we're going to take a quick break to talk about my Guide to Kid podcast. So, obviously, this episode is all about the kid podcast Little Leaders, but if you've never heard of kid podcasts or you don't really know what they can do for you as a mom, let me just tell you. (laughs) I use them all the time and you can too. You can use them when you're running errands with the kiddos to keep them from complaining the whole time. Or when you need a mom break, you can grab an easy activity like coloring pages or magnet tiles, turn on a kid podcast and your kids will be entertained for at least half an hour. And that's only the tip of the iceberg of ways you can use kid podcasts. And to help you figure out which one is best for your kids, I made a guide to kid podcasts. There are eight categories on this guide, ranging from science to mindfulness to audio drama, with at least three podcasts in each category. There are 28 podcasts in total on the guide. I've listened to each of the podcasts so I can attest to them being kid-friendly. And I put my email at the bottom of the guide so that if you try a couple with your kids and none of them are a good fit, you can email me and I will personally help you find a kid podcast that works for your littles and you. You can grab this guide at the link in the show notes. Now we get to hear from Tina as she talks about the inspiring kids she gets to talk to on her podcast. I am so excited to talk to Tina today about her kid podcast, The Little Leaders Podcast, and I love kid podcasts, so I love kid podcasters. I'm so excited to introduce you to my listeners, but before we dive in, can you introduce yourself a little bit to my listeners? Oh, of course, and thank you so much for having me today. I am a newly retired teacher in 2021, uh, 33 years, primarily in grades five and six. I loved it, and every job has its ups and downs, but I knew I would miss the kids when I left. I live in upstate New York, land of the snow, although not (laughs) as much this winter. Um, My husband and I have a daughter and two Akitas, and so they keep us, all keep us busy. I'm an (laughs) author, children's author as well, um, and creating an online course for kids. So I really say I transitioned more than I retired because I knew when I left school, I wanted to add value to kids and still be around kids, but contribute in a different way. Definitely. And maybe in a way that you have a little bit more control over your hours, probably. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And content. Yes, yes, totally. So I feel like you kind of touched on it on that transition instead of like a full retirement. But Mm -hmm. can you dive into a little bit more of why you started the Little Leaders podcast? Sure. So when the pandemic happened, we were all, all of us, kids, teachers, parents, thrown into, you know, Google Classroom overnight. And I had never done anything like that before. I was scared out of my mind. And over time, within that first month, as the dust settled and we literally got into an online routine, I was just so impressed with the ability to have a safe space for kids online where we could still share um, 
and learn from one another. And at that same time, I started listening to more podcasts because we ha- all had more time. And mm-hmm. I took an online course um, to learn more about it. And I literally just between learning how to create a podcast and wanting to add value to kids, I fell in love with the process. And so didn't get into that process until about a year, year and a half ago um, when school was officially finished and they had more time. Definitely. I, I totally get that. I wanted to start a podcast for a really long time and I finally pulled the trigger like two years ago. And yeah, I feel you just kind of have to make sure the time is right for mm-hmm. a podcast. And it sounds like you waited until the time was right. So that's great. And we're yes. glad that you finally did it. <laughs> I, lo- I love it. I really love it. Oh, I'm so glad. So what do you want parents, well, kids and their parents to get out of the Little Leaders podcast? Well, there's a couple of things, really. Um, my hope is that with each episode that kids and parents listen to, that there's a sense of joy, a sense of inspiration, and a deeper understanding of just the unique perspectives that all kids have about their own experiences that they share with other kids that are just like them. I think our news sometimes makes it sound like there's always bad things happening everywhere, and I don't know what messages kids get from that. But honestly, if you listen to these young leaders that I interview, there is genuine goodness and kindness in all of them in the different things that they are doing, whether it's helping kids that look like they're not being included at recess or fundraising and building a team for um, St. Baldrick's Cancer Research, uh, writing a book with their parents about um, a story that they've always shared at bedtime to share with others. It's I, I just love the children I'm able to have conversations with. Definitely. Well, and my kids especially love hearing other kids on podcasts. I think it's just so... I think it just is even more connecting for them to hear Mm -hmm. kids just like them on a podcast. And I know that my kids always like gravitate toward those the most, like they love all of the different kid podcasts, but when they can hear another kid, it's just, it's just different and they just really love it. So we really love your type of podcast. (laughs) Thank you. There it's relatable. They all relate to each other so well. Mm -hmm. I, yes, I completely agree. So, I feel like we've touched on it, but let's talk about how you would describe the feeling or the vibe of your show. I consider the vibe really to be warm and a place of authenticity because the Mm. kids come on and they are themselves and they share experiences that all kids have at some point or at some, you know, varying degree. Um, The conversations give you a glimpse into that child's life, into their personality. And the vibe also is one in which I'm so grateful that they want to share their experience with others because they're able to make an impact to anyone who listens. Sometimes we as kids feel like we're the only ones going through something, whatever that something is, or we want to do something, but we don't think anyone else is doing it. So we're not sure. But then when you hear someone share their knowledge or their experience, um, that genuine voice that comes across is eye-opening to the listener. And so Mm -hmm. I hope they can walk away with a better feeling or perspective and hopefully have a conversation with their family and friends. Definitely. Yeah. When I was listening to one of your episodes to prep for this interview, Mm -hmm. one of the things that I loved the most was how genuine the sweet little girl was. She was just like excited to be kind and excited to like be helpful. And it was just so sweet to hear her like just genuine, like sweetness just come out. It was just so fun. So fun to hear. And it's refreshing. Yes, definitely. Definitely. So I like to ask all of the hosts that I interview what their favorite episode is, but to give you, give you a second to think about it. Can you first tell me where can people find you, your show, social media, website, 
all of that stuff. Sure. So you can find me on my website, tinashepardson.com under the podcast tab or go right to the podcast it has a separate website, the little leaders podcast.com and little is L I L instead of L I T T L E. Um, I'm on Instagram, very active there at the little leaders podcast and Twitter at the little leaders pod. And uh, I, you can message me, email me, and I always get back to people within a day or two at the most. Fabulous. Okay, I will um, we'll make sure to link all of that in the show notes so people can find you exactly where they want to. And now, what is your favorite episode or couple? If I know it's hard to choose just one sometimes. Well, it's funny. I was thinking about this because as a teacher, you never should have favorites. <laughs> <laughs> True. And I thought, my gosh, that's a hard question because... Every single guest that I've had in the short time I've been online since September has just added tremendous value, I think, to the listening community. But if there was one that I would have to highlight or would like to highlight, it'd have to be my first one because um, the young man that I had was a former student of mine. His name is Bodhi Centaur. I had him in grade six. I taught grade six for um, 18 years. And I asked him when I was putting this all together if he would be the first guest. And the reason I chose him was because he, as a 10-year-old, was just and still is just a real humble, hardworking kid who at that point had been fundraising with the help of his family for St. Baldrick's um, because of a stay he'd had with pneumonia in first grade. And he wanted to help those kids that he saw that were sicker than he was and felt Mm -hmm. worse than he was. So um, I thought, you know, it's it, it's just for new listeners, a way for them to maybe look ahead and say, my gosh, he started this when he was a child, and now he's going to college, and he's a really good person. I can do that. Or they might find another passion. Um, he always had and still does a great way of uniting people. And I think as we all grow and mature, it's just great for kids to, you know, have that food of thought. And, and he was just great to roll with an older teacher. <laughs> uh, we had a great conversation, and um, I admire him for everything that he's done. That sounds awesome. Um, we'll make sure to link that in the show notes, too, so that people mm-hmm. can find that easily. Okay, I like to ask kid podcast hosts um, about what age range do you um, like focus on? I know that when you're making your show, I know that kids outside of that age range usually listen as well but Mm -hmm. like for moms to kind of get a ballpark or like an idea of where to start what is the age range you usually look at for the show question uh it's really targeted ages 5 to 11 or 12 um however as you say you know hopefully it's more of a family experience and parents listen as well so that we can gently encourage good conversations about the things that the guests are sharing um, that can mm-hmm. happen. So, you know, it's really inclusive of everyone, but generally targeted for ages 5 to 12. Okay, fabulous. Then that, and I completely agree. And usually I feel like I have some really good experiences with my kids when I sit and listen with them. Mm-hmm. And then, like you said, we have those good conversations but also sometimes I just need a break and kid podcasts are an easy way for me to get that break. So I like having both options. <laughs> um, okay. Is there anything do you want to add that we haven't touched on yet? Um, I have a middle grade book called Canines Unleashed releasing in April um, about a dog who wakes up one day to find out he's going to doggy daycare because his owner is going to kindergarten and oh. they don't want him. His name's Hank. And they don't want him home alone all day. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, it's cute. And a picture book in the fall, uh, The Sorry Seeds, about a girl who lives on the same street as her teacher who has the most beautiful apple tree. And she's always wanted to try an apple, and she gets caught taking one. Mm. And it's about how she's going to face her the next day and how to apologize authentically. Wow, that sounds fabulous. Yes, I was that child. And- <laughs> <laughs> but you, yeah, I'm sure that you will, you tell that I'll story never very well. It. Yeah, it's yeah, it turned out beautifully. Um, 
And I'm creating an online course that uh, will release late May just to help kids in that same targeted age range, grade or ages 5 through 12, um, just to work on confidence and connection in our ever-changing world with just fun activities. Nice. Thank you so much for being on the show today. It has been an absolute delight having a a great conversation with you. And I cannot wait for my listeners to find the Little Leaders podcast and enjoy it as much as I have and my kids have. Thank you. And what an awesome thing that you're doing, helping kids and families find these family-friendly podcasts. I'm just really glad to help. We love kid podcasts and more families need to know about them. So I'm glad. I'm just glad we can help. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. Isn't Tina just delightful? I'm so grateful she uses her platform to elevate and inspire kids. If you know someone or a family who could use the Little Leaders podcast in their life, will you share this episode with them? Also, if you're looking for another tool for your parenting toolbox, grab my kid podcast guide. Talk to you soon. (laughs) 